Well, good morning and welcome to Finley Lake United Methodist Church, where our mission is knowing Christ and making Christ known. And we are so thankful that you've gathered with us. And if you're on Facebook right now, we would love to know that you've tuned in. So say hello. Uh, if you have prayer requests, you can mention those in the comments. Also, if you have praises, uh, if there's anything on your heart that you're praising God for, we would invite you to share those. Uh, it's one of the ways that we can stay connected. Even though we can't gather physically here at the church, we can stay connected uh, through social media and online. And so we really encourage you to make yourselves known, share prayer requests, share praises uh, throughout this time in worship together. Uh, as we gather this morning, one of the things that has united believers in Jesus together throughout the centuries is our common faith and what we believe about God. And so I would invite you as we enter into this time to share in the recitation of the Apostles' Creed. And uh, this is a creed that, that crystallizes our faith uh, and what we believe about God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I invite you to join with me, and the words will be on the screen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's open our time together in prayer. God, we thank you for your presence with us. No matter where we are right now, whether we're listening in a living room or in our kitchen or in a car, we thank you, Lord, that you are present and you are uh, with us in this time. And God, we pray that as we gather and worship, that our hearts and our minds would be ready to receive your word, uh, that we would be willing to respond with faith and trust and obedience. God, most of all, we pray that as we worship, as we sing, that you would be pleased and glorified through everything that happens here this morning. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. I'm going to invite us to go into a time of pastoral prayer where uh, we think about those uh, burdens, those praises, those things that are on our hearts. And as we begin this new week, uh, some of us are experiencing just the joys of uh, life and love. Uh, others are really feeling burdened by uh, just the circumstances and the events of our day. Uh, I know just a few days ago, a couple days ago, those of us in New York found out that uh, school would not be gathering in the building, and uh, that makes it hard on teachers and students, and, and it's a change, continued change for parents. Uh, we want to lift up teachers and administrators and kids. Uh, we also want to continue to pray for healthcare workers, doctors, nurses, uh, all those who are serving uh, at this special time. And... Um, I invite you to uh, just lift up your hearts to God. Let's pray. God, we are so thankful that you are a God of mercy and grace. And no matter what we are going through today, Lord, you are ready to hear us, you're ready to respond, and Lord, we thank you that you never leave us or forsake us. God, it's a, a marathon as we go through this unprecedented time uh, during this season of pandemic, Lord, we pray that we would trust in your grace, that we would receive your strength, and that we would take one day at a time living to praise and glorify you. God, today we lift up uh, teachers and staff and administrators and, and kids everywhere who now know they will not be returning to school. God, we pray that you would comfort those who are saddened, that you would give strength and endurance to teachers who are continuing to teach online. We thank you for them. Uh, Lord, bless students and, and parents as they uh, continue uh, going through this time of homeschooling. God, we pray that you would be involved in this process. Lord, we continue to lift up doctors and nurses and all those in the healthcare field who are caring for the sick. Uh, bless them, we pray. Lord, today we lift up uh, all those who are on our hearts, who are in need of your healing in body, mind, and spirit. 
God, we think of those battling cancer. We think of those who are undergoing tests. We think of those who are concerned about loved ones. God, we pause now just to lift up uh, the people and the situations that are on our minds. God, as we continue in this time in worship, we pray that we would be attentive to you as you are attentive to us. God, we pray that you would be pleased and glorified through our time together. We pray, Lord, that as the body of Christ, we would, uh, that we would um, honor you in all things, that we would be the people you are calling us to be for one another and for the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
right for all you kids out there if you want to lean in and maybe get a little closer to your screen whether that's a tablet or a phone or a, a TV um, we're gonna have the children's moment and um, today in our passage we're looking at Matthew chapter 14 and in this passage the disciples are on the boat we have our little tub of water and the boat was out floating on the water and there was a storm and the disciples even though they were experienced fishermen they started uh, getting scared of the storm and they saw Jesus walking on the water to see them and what do you think they thought when they saw Jesus walking on the water towards them they were terrified they thought that Jesus was a ghost and they cried out to him and uh, Jesus said take courage don't be afraid it's me it's Jesus and Peter said Lord if it is you call me and I'll call me to come to you and so Jesus says come on Peter and Peter gets out of the boat and he starts walking towards Jesus and do you know what do you remember what happens Peter for a few steps we don't know how far Peter actually walked on water until he took his eyes off Jesus and he got afraid and he started paying too much attention to the wind and the storms and he started to sink and he cried out to Jesus again in fear and you know what Jesus did Jesus grabbed him by the hand and saved him and rescued him and this reminds us that in our lives sometimes we feel like we're sinking you know what makes us feel like we're sinking sometimes we're sinking in sadness or sinking in frustration or sinking in loneliness but whatever we're facing in our lives Jesus wants us to call out to him and he wants us to trust in him and when we call out to Jesus and say Jesus help me he takes us by the hand and he lifts us up and he reminds us that he's with us and that he loves us and that we can trust in him and so let's remember that no matter what we're facing in our lives sometimes the wind and the storms are coming and sometimes we're afraid but during those times we can trust in Jesus and know that he will hold us he will rescue us he will never leave us let's pray will you pray with me Nathan and Grace and all of you let's pray dear Jesus we thank you that you are always faithful that you always love us and no matter what's happened in our lives you are there to uh, protect us and save us and so Lord we trust in you today help us to have strong faith in Jesus name we pray amen as we continue to think about the needs of our world uh, this week I was made aware of the situation in Guatemala and uh, I know that there are problems locally I know there are struggles and issues and and all around the world there are uh, people in need of God's grace and provision but uh, one of my longtime friends reached out to me uh, to tell me about the situation in Guatemala where many people are hanging white flags uh, over their doors to indicate that they are without food and uh, I'm gonna invite you to, to look and to hear this uh, word from Chad Bader this greeting he's a missionary in Guatemala and uh, as a church family uh, we are receiving a special offering this week to care for them and so uh, um, here's Chad hi there Finley Lake my name is Chad Bader I'm a missionary here in Guatemala along with my wife and two kids it's an honor and a pleasure to get to communicate with you today as your pastor Dave Cook and I uh, go way back many years uh, to when I was in elementary school and I believe he was in middle school and uh, attended a church uh, in Greece, New York that his father was pastoring. So it's awesome to get to communicate with his own congregation here today. As you guys know, the coronavirus is affecting the entire world and, and Guatemala is no different. Uh, my wife and I, we have a ministry that usually serves a place about an hour and a half in here. And so that's where you are used to working in areas of extreme poverty. Uh, however, that poverty is now arriving in our own community. We're now entering our seventh week of quarantine, which means for many families here, no one's worked for the past seven weeks. Usually families are only working from week to week or even day to day. So to go without that long without work and uh, is, is heartbreaking. It's tragic and it breaks them. And so that's why we began seeing lots of white flags hanging from their doorposts. That means that the situation is bleak and there's now no more food for them and even their neighbors cannot help them. We believe that as followers of Jesus that he would not let us turn a blind eye to such poverty, so to such need. Uh, and so we also believe this is an opportunity to us to speak in truth into people's lives. 
And so we want our extending uh, pleas and invitation for you guys to help participate in that process. For just $25, we can supply uh, enough food for a few weeks to one family. And so what I'm asking is that the Lord leads you, would you please donate and so that we can also uh, reach families uh, here in our own community that are going without food, just the basic staple and the basic needs of life. Uh, so as a Rochester native, uh, Rochester, New York native, uh, fellow New Yorker, I want to let you guys know that we're standing with you. We're praying for you. We love you. And uh, let's fight this corona coronavirus that's taking a global toll. We love you. Goodbye. So I invite you to be a part of what God is doing through us to bless and provide for the people of Guatemala. Uh, if you would like to join us in giving, you can send uh, your checks, your gifts to the church, and just write Guatemala or food in the memo area, and we will make sure that the people uh, who desperately need hope and food uh, in, in Guatemala will receive it. And uh, I invite us to, to give uh, as the Lord leads. We are in week two in this sermon series called From Fear to Faith. And it's based on the song over and over uh, that we sang earlier. And in that, in that song, there's a line that says, from fear to faith. And that's what God wants to do in our lives. He wants to lead us from fear uh, into a deeper trust in him. Last week, as we got started, I said that there's a big difference between reacting in fear and responding in faith. When we react in fear, we don't act in healthy ways. We don't act in ways that glorify God. We, we speak out, we act out in ways that hurt others. But when we respond in faith, we're able to honor God and have a positive impact on the world around us. And I said that those who react in fear are like thermometers. They just rise and fall uh, based on their circumstances. But when we respond in faith, we're like thermostats who are able to pause and trust in God and have a positive impact on the people around us. And so we talked about the importance of being thermostats as we looked at the story of Daniel. Today, we are looking at Peter. And I invite you to turn with me to Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 33. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me! Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. As we dive into scripture this morning, uh, this story takes place just after Jesus had fed the 5,000 people with uh, five loaves of bread and two fish. And when the disciples wondered, how are we going to feed all these people? We need to send them away. Jesus did a miracle, and he showed how he is able to provide. Now, I'd like to think if you and I were there and were part of the, the feeding of the 5,000, that our faith would have been so bolstered that no matter what happened after that, that we would have, that we would have remained strong and uh, we, would have, we would have honored God with, with our strong faith. But one of the truths that I continue to discover about myself is that my faith is not perfect either. And I've been confronted during the past few weeks uh, with my imperfect faith. And, and even this season has kind of jarred me a little bit and made me realize that I'm not as strong uh, all the time like I would like to think I am. But the good news for me, and if you're like me, the good news for you, is that the Bible is not about people who have perfect faith. 
And the, the message of the gospel, the message of the Bible is not, if you have perfect faith, you'll have a perfect life, and everything will be perfect. The good news of the Bible is that God is a God who works in the lives of imperfect people to heal, to save, to accomplish his purposes, and to give second chances when second chances are needed. The Bible is filled with good news for imperfect people who have imperfect faith. So let's dive in this morning to this passage. Jesus sends the disciples on ahead of him into the, in the boat. He sends the crowds away and he meets up with them later. And then he goes to spend time with his heavenly father. The text says that after he sent the crowds away, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. And during this time, in the middle of Matthew's gospel, Jesus had a lot on his mind. Jesus was experiencing two very different reactions to his ministry. On one extreme, he was experiencing rejection. He was re experiencing rejection in his hometown of Nazareth. He was even experiencing rejection in his own home. And on the other hand, he was experiencing reception, people who were receiving his ministry. The crowds who were, who were crowding around him to experience his miracles and who were astonished by his teaching. And, and so Jesus had this very different reaction to his teaching, to his miracles, to his ministry. And it makes me wonder this morning, as we ask ourselves this question, how are you receiving Christ today and in this past week? And how are you rejecting Christ in this season of your life? In all different ways, we can receive him and reject him. So when it comes to the love of Christ in your life, are you receiving his love each day, and are you mindful of his love in your life? Or are you kind of keeping him at arm's distance, at arm's length? Are you receiving his word into your life as, uh, his, as direction, as, the, as the, 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 leader, the leading in your life? Or are you, again, just kind of doing your own thing? What about when it comes to his grace? Are you receiving and responding the grace of Jesus in your life that heals, forgives, and saves? Or are you kind of keeping him at arm's distance? So Jesus is in this time where he's experiencing being rejected and where he's being received. And along with this, is it hasn't been too long since John the Baptist was killed by Herod. And if you remember the story, John the Baptist was Jesus' cousin. And he spoke out against Herod's unlawful marriage. And because of that, John the Baptist was beheaded. And that had to be weighing on Jesus still, as that was only a few weeks or months prior uh, to this feeding of the 5,000 and now to this uh, account that we're focused on today. And so with all that was going on in Jesus' heart and life, he got away to be with his heavenly Father to pray, and he sent the disciples ahead. And after some time, a number of hours, when the boat was already several miles uh, across the sea, Jesus went out and he began walking on water. And the disciples see him, and they are terrified, and they think that he's a ghost, and they cry out in fear, and they get his attention. You know, here, Jesus responds to their cries, even though it wasn't really a cry of faith, it was more a cry of fear. And Jesus, uh, Jesus hears their cry. Jesus would actually prefer for us to cry out in fear than to not cry out at all. God is ready, willing, and able to meet us in the storm. But are we willing to cry out for help? So Jesus hears the cry of his disciples, and immediately he responds and says, Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. We have to pause right here for a moment. Because if we listen carefully to these words, we hear an echo going back to the Old Testament. So I want us to think about what we've just heard in Matthew chapter 14 as Jesus walks out onto the water. He hears the cries of his disciples. And he responds by saying, take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. What does that sound like? Does that sound like something we've heard before? When we go back to Exodus chapter 3, we think about what was happening in the lives of God's people. And they were slaves in Egypt, and God heard their cries. And what does God do when he hears their cries? When he, when he, res he responds to their suffering. And he raises up Moses, and God speaks to Moses at the burning bush. And he says, I'm sending you to lead my people out of slavery in Egypt. 
And Moses says, okay, but if I go to the people and I say, God has sent me to you to deliver you, and they say, well, who is this God? What is God's name? What do I tell them? And God says, I am who I am. Tell them that the I am has sent you to them. And so now, centuries later, Jesus hears the cries of his people. And when Jesus says, take courage, it is I. We may not hear it in English, but what they heard was a reflection of how Yahweh responded to Moses and said, I am who I am. And so what we see here is that Jesus is the same God as the God who met Moses at the burning bush. And Jesus was making it clear to, to Peter and the other disciples, I am the God of your ancestors. This really gripped me as I was studying for this uh, message this week. That the same God who walked with Adam and Eve in the garden is the same God who meets Moses at the burning bush. And it's the same God who rescued Jonah out of the, the Mediterranean Sea. And that's the same God who came in the person of Jesus Christ, who walked out on the water to hear the cries of his disciples and to say, take courage in his eye. And that same God, that same Jesus, is present with us now through the Holy Spirit. And he hears our cries, and he wants us to respond to him in faith. Our God is a God, and has proven this throughout the centuries, that he is one who responds. He hears the cries of his people, and he responds to our suffering as we cry out to him. My question for us now is, how do, how do you need to cry out to Jesus today? You know, so often we might be more fearful of crying out because of our own prideful self-reliance. But what we know from the, the scriptures is that God wants us to be trusting in him. He wants us to cry out to him. He would much rather have us cry out than to stay silent and self-reliant. Maybe someone who's watching today, someone who's listening, needs to just cry out to Jesus and acknowledge your need. To cry out in your pain. To cry out in fear. To cry out as you battle addiction. To cry out as you are anxious about your marriage. To cry out about your situation with your job. To cry out with the situation in your family. To cry out in your loneliness. One problem is that oftentimes we're too scared to cry out. We're too scared to, to make our need known to God and to others. But I think that maybe if we were to hear God's voice today, he would say that we shouldn't be scared to cry out, but that actually we should consider how we should be more scared, more afraid of not crying out. Because if we don't cry out, we don't express our faith in the one who can come and meet us in our pain and our suffering and our need. Peter and the disciples cry out. And he says to the Lord, If it is you, tell me to come to you on the water. And I love what Peter does here because he actually shows some faith. In crying out to Jesus and saying this to Jesus, he's, he's expressing some faith. And, and Peter often gets business for not having much faith, but at least he had some. I mean, you have to admit, it takes some guts to say, Lord, if it's you, you know, call me and I'll, I'll come out to you on the water. That at least takes some faith. It takes more faith than just silently sitting on the boat. And Jesus gives Peter a one-word command and invitation. And Jesus says, come. Come. And in that moment, as Jesus spoke that one word, Peter was more focused on that one-word command than on the wind and the waves and the storms that were all around him. Now, we know that didn't last for very long, but it does raise the question in my mind, are we more focused on Jesus' word to us, his command, his promises, his invitation, or are we more concerned with the circumstances and the wind and the waves that are storming all around us? Are we more focused on Jesus' word or on the wind. For that moment, Jesus was more focused on the word, and he steps out of the boat, and he starts walking towards Jesus, 
but we know the story. We know he gets distra distracted, he takes his eyes off Jesus, he starts to sink, and then Peter cries out to the Lord again, and he says, Lord, save me. And immediately, we see this word a lot in this passage, immediately, Jesus reaches out his hand, and he catches him. And he says, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And they climb in the boat, and the wind died down. I mentioned that this passage was good news for us today. Now, if we just focused on Peter and his failure, his, his little faith, and if we only get stuck thinking about our little faith, it might be hard for us to find the good news in this passage this morning. But the focus, as we look at this passage, the focus here is not so much on the quantity or the quality of Peter's faith. The good news of this passage is that no matter how weak and imperfect my faith is and your faith is, we have a perfect Savior who hears us when we cry out and is faithful to catch us when we fall. That's good news in this passage. The focus is not the weak faith of Peter, but the strong grace of Jesus. No, I don't know about your faith today. If you're like me, you've recognized in the past few weeks that how imperfect your faith is. But what I do know today is that, is that the grace of Jesus is strong and available to each and every one of us. And I know that the grace of Jesus is greater than your fear and anxiety. The grace of Jesus is greater than your failure. The grace of Jesus is greater than your financial need. The grace of Jesus is greater than the problem with your family. The grace of Jesus is greater than your pain. The grace of Jesus is greater than all of our sin. And his mercies are new every morning, and his grace is available to us today. Again, the good news of the gospel is not that your perfect faith will lead to a perfect life, but the good news of the gospel is that when my faith falters and your faith falters, God remains faithful. And he picks us up, and he washes us clean, and he reminds us of his love, and he fills us with his spirit, and he sends us off to, to try again, to live for his glory. His mercies are new every morning. So as we start to wrap up this morning, how do you need to cry out to God in faith? Don't stay silent. Don't stay pridefully self-reliant. But cry out to God and talk to him about your need. Talk to him about what's, what's going on inside your heart and your life. How do you need to receive Jesus today? How do you need to respond to his invitation, to his command? Again, Peter, his, his faith was little, but at least he was willing to step out of the boat when Jesus said, come. And what word of invitation, what word of command is Jesus speaking to you today? I think to each and every one of us, he speaks that same word. He says, come. Come and follow me. Come and step out of the boat. Come and learn to trust me. Step out of the boat of your comfort and learn how to serve in a way that might seem uncomfortable. Step out of the boat and reach out to that neighbor that you're wondering how they're doing. Step out of the boat and, and maybe go to that person, ask them to forgive you. Or step out of the boat and extend forgiveness where you want to hang on to your bitterness. How is Jesus speaking to you this morning? And are you more focused on his word or the wind and the storms that could preoccupy your heart and your life? Maybe you need to respond and come to Jesus as you trust in him for the first time as your Savior and Lord. Nothing would make us at Finley Lake Church, nothing would make up heaven happier than for you to come to faith in Christ and to, to give your life to him and receive his grace and, your, and his forgiveness as he wants to make you a child of God. How do you need to respond to come to Jesus today? Jesus comes to us in the midst of the storm. And he says, you know, at times your faith will seem strong. At times your faith will seem weak. But at all times, I will remain faithful. I will lead you. I will guide you. The good news is not so much that our faith is perfect, but that we have a perfect Savior. 
and he wants us to come and cry out to him today. Let's pray. God, we thank you that you are faithful. And even when we feel weak, even we, when we recognize that, that our faith has faltered, Lord, we are so thankful that you are faithful to catch us and hold us and save us and deliver us and to pour out your grace upon us so that we can have a fresh start as we seek to follow you. Lord Jesus, I pray that each of us would hear your invitation to come to you today. Just as you called Peter to step out of the boat and come to you, Lord, help us to know how you are calling us to step out of the boat to follow you in faith. Lord, forgive us of our sins, cleanse us of unrighteousness, fill us with faith so that we can honor you with our lives. Lord, we love you. We, we want to serve you. So teach us how to have strong faith. Teach us how to follow you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we go into our time of offering, uh, we're going to sing the song Oceans, uh, all about stepping out uh, onto the water. And I, I just ask, as we sing this song of offering, that we would offer our hearts to the living God, that we would cry out to him, that we would offer our, our time, our talents, our treasure, that we would offer our hearts, and that we would seek to uh, respond as the Holy Spirit leads. Let's offer ourselves to the living God.
Thank you so much for worshiping with us this morning. Uh, throughout the week, we have several times to connect as the body of Christ. Uh, you're invited to join in every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock for our Zoom prayer time and check-in. And uh, we share prayer requests. We have different people from our church family uh, share uh, devotional thoughts and scripture readings. And so you're welcome to join us for that. Send us a message if you'd like to receive more information about that. Also, on Thursday evenings, we have a Jonah Bible study that happens at 7 o'clock. You're invited to take part in that as well. We've also begun having children's junior church and ICTHUS check-ins as well on Fridays at 7 o'clock. Uh, so kids can gather together and hear Bible stories and connect uh, as younger kids. So uh, we have several things happening. If you are in need, please reach out to us. We would love to respond. We have a food pantry that's well stocked with food. If you uh, or someone in your life is wondering where their next meal is going to come, we'd love to reach out. Uh, if you are just having questions in your life of faith, if you are wondering how to get out of the boat and take your next faith step forward, uh, reach out to us. We'd love to connect with you. We'd love to chat with you on the phone or connect through social media. So send us a message if there's any way that we can serve you. Uh, as you begin this new week, know that Jesus is faithful and his love is unfailing. And now as you go, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. God bless you and have a great week.